Ashadosh Kajuria, ED at Federal Bank, is now joining us uh, on the phone line. Ashadosh, uh, what's your view uh, on the rupee after the policy? We have seen mixed views so far in uh, in you know, about three four days time. Yeah, I think I don't see any major movement happening because the policy was just on uh, projected means or rather fully on the expected, uh, uh, you know, uh, view on uh, the uh, interest rate signaling. But as regards liquidity, there was some, uh, you know, sort of surprise, uh, a pleasant surprise for bankers. So I think uh, liquidity part definitely is going to help uh, the, the bond market going forward. I think uh, if that attracts investors, so there are some capital movements happening on debt side. You, we may find, you know, some uh, sort of capital flows coming in. And if those happen, then rupee would send them. But overall, rupee would maintain its regular pace of about, uh, you know, about 3% depreciation in a year. Roughly 1%, quarter per, uh, three quarters of a percentage to 1% per, uh, de depreciation per quarter. Right. Uh, you know, uh, where do you see the rates going? Uh, the 10-year bond yield after the RBI had a mixed reaction now. Uh, you know, uh, slight bit of profit booking coming, but uh, you believe that uh, the trajectory is on the downside? Uh, definitely. Only thing is, initially, uh, you know, uh, some uh, players had built up for about 50 basis points cut. That has not happened. Uh, now, that was a little disappointment maybe to some players. Mainly the uh, equity market was expecting, uh, you know, more of uh, 50 basis points cut. Uh, bond traders as such were reconciled to something like, uh, you know, 25 basis points cut with a dovish statement. Because, you know, there are three basic pillars of any monetary policy. Uh, there is uh, the rate signal, there is the uh, statement which follows, and uh, third most important part is the liquidity. Because if liquidity is not injected, then I think the first two do not really uh, help in transmitting the monitoring signals. So I think all three were addressed by uh, Reserve Bank of India. Uh, they did cut by 25 basis points. Um, Governor, um, uh, you know, his statement was, uh, you know, accommodative. He used that term, the accommodative staff continues. And finally, on the liquidity front, uh, you know, I mean, uh, reaching the near neutral uh, from, you know, uh, more than 1% of NDTL as deficit uh, is, is a very good, uh, you know, sort of objective, very good target. Right. Uh, would help, you know, bringing more money to the uh, to, to the corporate sector. So banks would have uh, enough, you know, sort of liquidity to lend for, to productive sector. Right. Mr. Kajuria, just uh, on, on, you know, some other trend that we can observe. A lot of small companies are going to the banks and, uh, uh, you know, striking out big debt deals. Uh, so, you know, a lot of debt closure is happening. And do you expect that to be the trend in the next two months? Uh, you know, settlements happening and uh, a little bit of debt closure coming in, which should be positive for the banking sector overall? See, uh, any any measure taken to recover the stuck money, whether it is, uh, you know, from the angle of uh, the promoters or from lenders' side, uh, because the money has to move in circulation. If it's net, if it, if it has got stuck in some of the projects which are not taking off and there is some, you know, asset sale which is bringing in enough uh, liquidity to the corporates to reduce their debt and make it more manageable and make it viable. You know, if that happens, you know, it's, it's welcome. It's welcome for economy, it's welcome for lenders certainly, and it's welcome for, uh, you know, the industrial growth. Investors as well. Right, Investors who are invested in these companies. You know, the big problem area in terms of NPA was infrastructure, uh, was probably chemicals, constructions, and uh, the metals pack. Uh, a little bit of, uh, you know, relief is coming in on the infra side, on the chemical side. You think uh, that itself should be taken positively, at least, uh, you know, that a little bit of uh, uh, issues are getting solved? If you say biggest, then I think infra and steel would lead the pack. Uh, metal, particularly. I mean, uh, in within metal, it's steel. Uh, and, of course, infra... Uh, then I think uh, some impact on commodities was also there, other commodities was, uh, other than metal also. But gradually, uh, that, that has stabilized. In fact, if we look at one of the uh, most popular in, inedible commodity, which is oil, uh, India has been benefited by its, uh, you know, uh, fall in prices. Uh, so because we are a major net importer. Um, as regards, you know, uh, iron ore and uh, also, you know, I mean, some other... Uh, 
you know, metal related ores and all, uh, it may not help our exports because we have been exporters of uh, iron ore and we continue to be uh, one. Uh, but then overall, you know, I think uh, if the iron ore prices gradually move up, which they have started, uh, then I think it makes those um, steel manufacturers more uh, sort of uh, uh, bring some sort of relief to these manufacturers who own these mines. So for them, you know, I think uh, the, the competitors' cost increases, means they'll be benefited. Right. Uh, sir, thank you so much for taking out time for us. I uh, hope to see you again uh, quite uh, soon.